All right, today we have a, I think, I believe it's a 2011 Kia Sorento that we're gonna do ECU remap on. So just a side note, Hyundai's and Kia's cannot be remapped through OBD, which is pretty much what every other car does. Hyundai's and Kia's need the ECU to be opened up. So in such a way that we have to take out the physical ECU from the car. Then this is the back panel. We already removed all the screws, so we have to open this panel up. We need access to the physical chip inside to be able to stick wires and pins into it so we can read and write the data inside. So follow along. It's a bit nerve-wracking process if you're not used to seeing it. She is. Uh, that wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> so basically what we have to do is we have to break off this uh, rubber seal here to be able to access it. So at least now what's important is we need this here, the physical chip itself. So once we have this one, we're gonna go to our Alintech K Tag program, uh, actually K Suite program. So we will find out what pins are needed to put here and here on the socket itself. Uh, that comes with our subscription to Alintech. Actually, they give you complete schematics on what to do with the ECUs when you open it up, so you don't make a mistake and fry one. Okay, so now we have here our código for how we're gonna pin the ECU. So there you go. Here it is. We have to have one pin there beside the IC itself and then these are the pins to provide power to the ECU itself. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, here we have pinned our ECU. So these are the actual pins that go and supply the power and uh, communication to our K-Tag. And this, you're wondering what this little thing here, uh, it's labeled as a boot wire. Uh, computer nerds will know that boot means that you are able now to access the information on the chip, like booting up a computer. So that's what basically enables read and write on the chip itself. And so this is, now the data being transferred to the ECU. So this is our status bar right there. So it's at 75%, 76%, 77, 78. So we wait until everything's finished reading. So that means we already have the stock file saved to our laptop. From then we can edit it and change the parameters such as fuel rail pressure, injection timing, injection quantity, throttle, EGR, and all of that. So we already read it, so we'll, read, we'll do one more step. We will read a backup file just in case something gets fucked up. We have a way to be able to restore the original ECU data and save ourselves from one very angry customer and one very bad day. Use, okay, ECU successfully read. Save file separately, yes. <laughs> Operation complete, okay, ECU read successfully. So we can turn this off our power supply and then what we need to do is open that file up to be able to tune. For this, we will plug in our ECM Titanium Editor tool. Okay, we have here now our saved files. These are pretty much all of it. These are the files related to our Sorento. As you can see, we have the ID. Uh, okay, these are pretty much the files that we have for one ECU. So we have the original file, we have the software ID file, and we have several backups here. 
just in case, like I said, something gets fucked up. So this is the file that we're gonna open on our editor software, and this is important also, this one, this ID file. This is what happens. Uh, with this one, we're able to know what software version is inside. So I'm gonna take this number, I'm gonna go to the Alien Tech website, and then try to browse if they have a driver for the file. A driver simply means table of contents. It's what decodes that binary file that we have just downloaded into something that's not garbage. Uh, think of it this way. If you open it, if you have a JPEG file, you need either Photo Viewer or Photoshop to open it. You cannot open it with anything else. You need a software or a program that understands ano yung laman ng file na yun. And then, once you open it, there's um, also a table of contents which arranges all the various things that we need to know, which is real pressure, throttle valve angle, um, injection volume, injection time, so on and so forth. So this is what we need from the alien tech, so we plug that in. And luckily, so something comes out here. Ta-da! We have it here, right there. So this is the driver name, so this is basically the table of contents that we need. And as you can see, this is the description of what that driver is. Kia Sorento 2.2, 16-valve CDI, uh, the ECU is Bosch, this is the processor itself, this is the software number, yada yada yada. Okay. So what we'll do is we're gonna copy this. Go to ECM Titanium, this one. Look at it at our editor tune. Original file. We will now enter here the driver name. If I don't enter the driver name, I can actually let the software search for the matching driver on its own, but that usually takes a few minutes. So if I already know the driver, I just paste that sucker in here. I download this driver. Like I said, this is the table of contents. This is what will tell us which parameters are what. And all of this shit needs internet to work. If there's no internet, cannot shoot. <laughs> Driver. And bam, there you go. This is what we want to see here. So these are everything that we can adjust in the Sorento. So we're this all of this is a we see torque limit here. Uh, this one here is EGR control. So this is where we will kill the EGR. So right now, as you can see, we'll take an example. The values here are all, see there's 35 here. So for this purposes, this is how much it opens. As you can see, the EGR basically opens at 35%, at, from idle all the way up to about 2,000 RPM, then gradually closes and shuts down. So if we want that to be permanently non-existent, Make that zero. Bang! Zero na. <laughs> that EGR will never open no more, ever. So this is basically what blanking an EGR is. Not through physical blanking it with a plate, but through the ECU. This is what EGR blanking is. So there are four tables for this one here. That's why we will change all of that. Uh, here's an interesting, here's an interesting thing that if you can see, uh, why EGR blanking really does not really do much at all for power because as you can see here, this is the percentage where the EGR opens. It doesn't really open all the way, so it's all 22 percent, 25, then gets bigger and bigger up to about 1.5 to 2,000. This range is basically cruising speed, light throttle, and then not a lot of load on the engine but as you go up the rpm as you can see here now it becomes zero in short it's completely shut off so that's why yung egr pag umuupak ka sarado talaga yan bumupukas lang siya at idle and light throttle this is basically that tells us what it is so yan zero din siya but uh, nandito na rin so we're gonna change all of that out to zero also permanently no more egr bye bye <laughs>
Okay, so we're gonna edit the rest of these things. So this pertains to how much fuel that we're gonna inject. So injection timing, smoke limitation. Um, this is we control how much smoke we want. This diesel's now <laughs> smoke a lot. Uh, limiter, we're, this one pretty much don't change anymore. This pertains to boost pressure and this controls rail pressure. So we're gonna do a baseline dyno first to see what stop power we're making, what's the air fuel ratio before we adjust the rest of these things. So that in a nutshell is how we reflash the Kia Hyundai car. So once we've done the editing, we will save this into another file then write it back here. Not exactly a fast process but not that tedious either. But well it can be done in one day. It just takes several rolling and roll off of dyno because once it's there in the dyno, the ECU has to go back. Car obviously will not start now because the ECU is not in the car. So every adjustment that we have to make afterwards, we have to remove the ECU again, come back here, put it on the table, do the whole process, write it and put it back. Yeah, you're right, it is a bit tedious. And yes, only we can do it for the price that we're charging. Nobody else. That's a little bit surprising. We always thought it was, uh, came in a front wheel drive version, but apparently it's not. So our baseline is at 158 to the wheel, right there. Uh, for an all wheel drive car, this is not bad because normally four wheel drive cars and all wheel drive cars get about 60 horsepower loss from whatever's written on the paper. So let's say a 300 horse Subaru STI will do 240 on the dyno. So if we take this figure right here, this 158, to the wheel, if you add 60 to this one, this thing's actually closer to shit, 220. <laughs> it's not bad. So after remapping, we got a final peak power of 191. So it's 30 horses peak to peak. But the biggest gain is here at the very bottom. Uh, it went from 98 all the way up to 150. So it's 50 horses right then and there. So instant sibat. We also made the torque higher. Our peak torque before was 364. And now we've increased it to 475 at only 22 RPM. Uh, this dip we are not able to get rid of because if you see the stock one, there really is a dip here. We think that this has something to do with the four wheel drive transmission engaging. But anyways, uh, it's a better graph now than what the stock is. So malakas yung sipa goes on a little bit, but it's a straight line from 28 all the way up to red line of 4,000. Very good, uh, very impressive. And as you saw in the dyno a while ago, it's a bit smoky already at full throttle. We can actually make more power, but it has to be smokier. So uh, probably we won't do that anymore because this is what happens. This is our air fuel ratio chart. This is the stock air fuel ratio already, and it's rich for a diesel at 17. So when we added fuel, uh, we brought it down to 16. We can add a bit more fuel to make more power, but as it reaches this line here, it will be very mausok already, and obviously owner does not want that. But on a side note, the usok and the smoke will only come out at full throttle and at 2.6 RPM. That's it. Anything that's not that, meaning cruising, traffic, traveling at 120 at 2,000 RPM only, and 20% throttle, hindi siya mausok. It's only mausok on nakabaon. And when that happens, the assumption is you have a lot of road in front of you anyway, so the smoke doesn't matter. 